Who do you think defines the model of development in a country? For me, development is one of those tricky terms because it will depend on whose perspective you are taking into account. And it took me a while to understand the nuance of this term. Everything started while I was deciding what to study. It always like, uh, I always like nature and love all types of, of plants. So I think that influenced my decision of studying forestry. As an undergrad uh, student in Peru, we have to take field classes. And in my wildlife class in a community near Iquitos, I had to conduct interviews to the local with the local people to understand hunting practices uh, in the area. I noticed then that although we had traveled so much around Peru in our different courses, we didn't know the people and the context they are embedded in. And I recognized that we didn't know. And um, so that took me a while. And um, all this idea of the context and indigenous peoples having a different uh, concept, what development means, it took me um, to understand that I was assuming that just good technology, uh, access to uh, the global market, and um, efficiency managing resources, it will be enough to achieve development. But development for whom? The Amazon is mostly seen as a source of natural resources, but at the same time is seen as home and life itself by hundreds of different indigenous peoples. Well, um, some people call these differences of uh, development ethno-development or endogenous development because they are trying to differentiate it themselves from the uh, market globalized notions of development. So there are two competing expectations of what development means, indigenous peoples and non-indigenous peoples. And this is creating conflicts in Peru. So for instance, political, environmental, ecological, and social conflicts. Actually, in the Peruvian ombudsman, it is registered among the average or 228 social conflicts, and most of them are related to destruction of natural resources. So grassroots organizations, uh, journalists, and respected academics identified that such conflicts are mostly and primarily driven by, dry, driven by transnational corporations' models of businesses. So extraction or exploitation, production, consumption, and marketing uh, of these products that are way beyond our planet ecological boundaries. Also, it has been documented that transnational corporations have the tendency to exploit nature under the name of development and progress, while externalizing ex um, liabilities to the communities and the environment. Furthermore, transnational corporations take part in the writing of public national policies regarding the management of the commons and shared resources. Well, there is an increase of rural and indigenous movements voicing the different perspectives of development. I mentioned these two types of development, right? Endogenous and uh, um, ethno-development. So in the Amazon, people, indigenous peoples are articulating that uh, the projects of development that are executed in their territories should take and support, should support their visions and desires for their future. And the way that they are doing this is through the creation of organizations that, uh, indigenous organizations that will provide a means to, for them to uh, support their visions and what actually desire for their future. Currently in Peru, there is an asymmetric struggle to address main powers, uh, main transnational powers, so they respect the self-determined ethno-development of indigenous peoples. There has been some achievements, sadly at high cost of human lives. 
In 2009, there was a, a sadly success in, in what is called the Bawa Massacre, and it was a clash between military forces and the people. Well, the people was able to uh, create enough pressure to the government to eliminate certain decrees that were threatening their desires for the future, well, their collective and individual visions after a free, a tra a free trade agreement signed with the U.S. Well, I was mentioning at the beginning that I wasn't getting to know actually the context of people and the people itself. So I decided to do something about that. Through a master's and a PhD now, we are forming alliances with Asheninka and Jinayami peoples for the Peruvian Amazon to collaboratively research about what they envision for their futures. There are some uh, evidence that suggests the necessity of establish meaningful and endogenous indicators of development, so are based in the context and culture. As well, it is important to recognize the um, well recognition of a plurinational state in Peru and a practice of it. So these endogenous processes are vital in order to influence public policies in Peru and as a way to address current and future conflicts between humans and humans and nature. Underlying all of these are two important values. First, uh, respectful coexistence and reciprocity. Thank you very much for listening.